Yesterday I picked up this beautiful old typewriter. It's an Underwood number no. three. It's at least a hundred years old and it needs a good cleaning. I wanna start by blowing out all the dust that's accumulated inside, but I don't have an air compressor. I do, however, have a shop vac that can blow air, but none of the attachments that come with a shop vac give you that same needle of air that you get with an air compressor. I want to see if I can 3D print an attachment for the shop vac to get that same jet of air as you would get with an air compressor. Here's one of the attachments for my rigid shop vac. We can measure the dimensions of this to design our new attachment. So I'm going to need this internal diameter that slips on the hose, 1.8 inches. We can use the little collar thing that slips under the clip. Use our depth gauge right there, 0.08 inches. We're in Fusion 360 and we can start by entering those dimensions as parameters. So I'll go to modify, change parameters, inside diameter, collar, length, collar, depth, 0.08 inches. We need to measure one more dimension, the interface length, because on this shop vac, we have these little clips that hold the attachments on. So we don't want to go any further than the extent of this clip. 0.875 inches. Interface length, 0.875 inches. So let's start by creating a cylinder that will represent the inside cavity of our attachment. Diameter inside, interface length. We can create a new parameter, and that can be the wall thickness. We can make this similar to the existing attachments, which is 0.1 inches. And I know that that's a good wall thickness for 3D printing. So let's just stick with that. Now we'll create another cylinder on top of the first, except this time the diameter will be diameter inside plus two times wall thickness, because we need to account for both sides. The height will be interface length. And now we can do a combined command to hollow this out. So the target body will be the large cylinder, the tool body will be the original. Don't need to keep tools. And there we go. We got our interface length. Now we need to add what is probably the most important dimension in this whole project, the diameter of the nozzle hole. If it's too small, we might break our shop vac. This thing might explode. I guess we can try like 0.05 inches in diameter. Actually, we can, let's try even smaller. Let's try 0.03. And then we also need the nozzle length. I'll try three inches to start. Let's create an offset plane from the top of our interface length and we'll offset this upwards by the nozzle length. Now we can create a new sketch on top of here, put a circle in the middle, small nozzle diameter. Ooh, that is tiny. Hopefully we don't have any explosions. Then we can offset that circle outwards by wall thickness. Now we could loft between these two profiles to make a cone between them, but I want a shape that has a little more style. So I'm going to try a revolution. Let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. We'll project these lines. So we have our start and end points and I will create a spline. So I want it to start kind of straight and then start sort of going inwards and then come out like that. And then I can just adjust the spline points until it looks how I want. We'll offset it inwards by the wall thickness. Finish sketch, revolve, click on this profile. If we turn on our origin, it will be the blue axis. It looks like an old timey oil can. So I don't love this shape. Let's edit the spline. And in fact, I think we want to make the nozzle length longer. So let's change the nozzle length to four inches. Kind of just extend it out our snout because it auto changed the spline. So right click, edit sketch. But having a bit of a long snout would be handy because then we can get it into tight spots. Finish sketch. Ooh, okay, that looks better. So I think another thing we can do just to make the proportion seem better is extrude this downwards by like another inch. Fantastic. Now at the end of our attachment, we wanna add that little lip so it can clip into the thing at the end of the hose. Collar depth. Extrude that this way by minus collar length. I wanna increase the wall thickness to 0.2. You'll see why later on. And I actually wanna go back in and change this spline. We don't need that full thickness at the top of this spline. It can taper down, there we go. That'll be a more reasonable thickness up there. Amazing, that looks great. The reason I increased the wall thickness is I wanna be able to switch out the tips for this air jet attachment. So I can have different shapes, different diameters of the jet on the top. So I want to split this and then create a threaded connection. And having a thicker wall will allow us to do much nicer threads, as you'll see. I'll create an offset plane from the bottom. So I'm going to use the split body tool to split our air jet right there. 
I'll create a new sketch on here, offset it inwards by minus wall thickness divided by two. Then I can extrude just the inside ring upwards by thread length. So that will slot into each of our attachments. And now we just need to add threads to this. Now you can create threads in Fusion 360, but I want to use multi-start threads. With multi-start threads, you have multiple spirals parallel to one another, and it makes for a much faster, easy connection. And for a quick connect like this, I think multi-threads are gonna be really good. The problem is you can't do multi-start threads with the built-in thread tool in Fusion. So we're gonna create them manually. Now I can use the combine tool to cut this shape into our top piece. So the target body is going to be the top, tool body is the bottom, keep tool. Now we have a slot where these can interface and we just need to add threads. Before we do that, however, I want to offset this inwards so that we have a bit of clearance between those sleeves. So I'm going to create a new clearance parameter. I'll call this sleeve clearance. I'll try 0.015. We can offset the inside of this sleeve outwards, minus sleeve clearance. So we'll turn off the top and create the threads on the bottom. For our thread size, I'm gonna create a new parameter called thread width, and I'll put this in as 0.05 inches. You can always change this later on. Now I'm going to create a coil on this plane. This is where a coil is going to start from. So we select the center, we can pull it to the edge of our circle, we only want a partial revolution. I want a really quick, a quick little twist to put it on. So maybe only a third of a revolution. For the height, that's going to be thread length. We can use a triangular profile. That looks good for a thread. The section size, that will be our thread width. Looking good. I think we can make our threads a bit wider. So I'm gonna change the thread width to 0.06. And I don't want it to be so sharp here, so I'm gonna right click and chamfer that edge, thread width divided by two, and that way we can bring it out even further. 0.1, that's looking good. So now we can create a circular pattern, and we can kind of, we have a choice here. We can do three starts, we can do four starts. I think four would be really cool if we can get it to work. I wanna pull these faces so they flow into the rest of our body. So I'll select that press pull and pull it so it slopes in. I'll turn my top body back on and do a cut. So I'm gonna cut into the top, the tool will be the bottom, and that cut the threads into the top. I wanna get rid of these bits of threads that are sticking off the top. I'm just going to split our body right here, and now I can get rid of all of those little pieces. We need to create a bit of clearance between the threads themselves. My friend Grant Alexander has done a bunch of experimenting with 3D printed threads. He referred me to an article by Product Design Online, which says that if you offset the thread face by about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters, it provides for a really nice fit. So that's what I'm gonna try. And since I work in Imperial for no good reason, other than the fact that I'm used to it, gotta convert that to Imperial, which is 0 0.007 inches. Thread clearance, 0.007. I'll select all of my top faces, press pull, and this will be by minus thread clearance. It's not gonna be very easy to get our threads on these sharp corners here, so I wanna fill it this top, but I have a feeling Fusion is not gonna like that. So instead of trying and failing at a fillet, I'm just gonna use a quick revolve. We can revolve this profile around our blue axis, and that's gonna give us a really nice transition. And to make it even easier, I'm gonna do a similar thing on the inside. Then we can revolve this profile. And now we have a nice transition from that. All right, I think we're ready to print a test one and hopefully a working one. Let's see. I'm printing this out of PLA with 0.15 millimeter layer heights and 15% infill. These files will be available on my website and I'll have all the print settings there as well. Here is the nozzle. Needed a bit of support material for the lip in there. First test, let's see if these thread nicely together. I think because the support material made a bit of a rough face, it's not seating fully, but we got threading. 
All right, so there's air going through. Oh, let's test this. I'm nervous, but we'll see. That fits great. Goes right over the clip. All right, got my finger on the switch. I'm ready to turn it off in case anything goes haywire. So that just popped off. Bit too much of a pressure buildup. Okay, so hole is too small for sure. I think what I'm gonna do is start chopping off pieces and see how big of a hole we need to actually not build up too much pressure. Testing. That's better. We do have some air leakage out from the side where it's not seating fully, so that's gonna be critical in the next redesign to create a bit of clearance between those mating faces. Pretty good. 3 16 is solid. It's not as much as an air compressor, but that's a really good jet of air. So, you know, if it doesn't go up from there, I'm happy with that, but let's keep bumping it up. All right, this is 1730 seconds. Okay, it's starting to feel like we've plateaued. I, this would be a great scientific experiment. I should have had like an air meter or something for this. So I think I'm gonna stick with um, the last one we did. I took what I learned from this one, modified my design and printed a new nozzle. So I matched the hole size. This is 0.2 inches or five millimeters. I also added a bit of clearance to this brim so we can screw it on fully. Let's see how well it works. Ooh, look at that. You can barely see the seam. That is a nice, quick connect. Put the base piece on. I love how well that clicks into place. Put on our quick connect. Here we go, let's see. That is awesome. I moved into the garage because I didn't want to cover my apartment in 100-year-old dust. Let's see how well this thing cleans out the typewriter. So after blowing the dust out, I gave this a good cleaning with mineral spirits, oiled the moving parts with sewing machine oil, and it is working awesome now. There are still a couple things I wanna fix on this typewriter, so make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that. And as I mentioned, the STL files to 3D print your own precision air nozzle are available on my website. I'll leave a link for that in the description. I know the quick connect isn't totally necessary because you can just slide shop vac attachments onto the hose and they click into place, but this was mostly because I wanted to see if I could design multi-start threads in Fusion 360. If you'd like to directly support my channel, but you don't want a precision air nozzle, I also have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. There are some cool rewards over there, including a patrons exclusive Instagram page where I post exclusive behind the scenes content. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.